Okay. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <coughs> you know, yesterday, <coughs> yesterday you know, we discussed about the method of singularity or uh, calculating or analy analyzing the flatter problem. And today, this morning, I would like to start with the discussion on the actuator disk method. But before that, uh, yesterday I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, for uh, concerning the uh, singularity method. So this method can be used for compressible flow also. But uh, if we uh, analyze the compressible flow problems, uh, we should use uh, doublet or uh, dipole uh, singularity uh, here instead of the vortex. Uh, because in the compressible flow, we cannot use vortex uh, anymore, and <clears throat> we must use uh, the droplet, uh, well, uh, no, not droplet, but uh, doublet or dipole source here. And, but the whole process and concept is the same as for the incompressible flow. So uh, we can calculate the uh, compressible flow case also by this method. So one additional uh, point. <coughs> okay. So uh, as for the actuator disk method, yeah, I introduced the concept of the actuator disk already in the, uh, yesterday's morning session. Okay. So uh, I'd like to show you the uh, details of this method. <clears throat> so the actual disk method, a cascade is replaced by a discontinuous surface here, shown here. So this is a linear cascade, a uh, flat plate. And uh, if we look at it from far outside, we can see like this. So uh, the cascade is replaced by one uh, disk, thin disk. And we neglect the code length and also pitch. So it's a continuous disk. So this is an uh, uh, assumption of uh, actuator disk. And the flow properties are described in upstream and downstream fields separately, here and here. And flow comes from upstream and suddenly change its uh, feature at this disk and connect to the downstream. And we describe the perturbation properties here upstream and downstream separately. And then we, co uh, we connect uh, these two flow fields by the connecting boundary condition at the disk. And then uh, after that, we can uh, calculate all the properties of upstream and downstream whole flow fields. That is the concept of the uh, discontinuous surface actuator disk theory. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, we need some empirical knowledge uh, as for the total pressure loss and so on for the boundary conditions. But uh, the actual disk method enables us to consider the answer flow field almost completely theoretically and has applicability for widely ranged flow conditions. It's more wide than this uh, singularity method. So that is a very useful uh, method. And uh, oh, this is uh, in the, uh, for a uh, three-dimensional case, uh, we can also use this method. And this is an uh, uh, hub and tip. It's a span-wise direction. And uh, also, we can look at it from far outside as an uh, discontinuous uh, disk here. Okay. And <clears throat> figure 1.2 shows uh, the, uh, sorry, it's an <laughs> written in Japanese, but uh, it is a uh, control surface, a uh, control volume <laughs> for actuator disk. Uh, this is a uh, leading edge of a um, uh, uh, blade, and trailing edge uh, surface is here. And uh, it's a, this is an adjacent uh, braid, okay? okay? So I, I'll show you uh, later the details of this one. And the, <clears throat> the second part is analysis of a two-dimensional cascade flat by actuator disk method. So 
analysis mo model is a, it's a two-dimensional linear flat plate cascade is considered, and the blade code is uh, C and pitch is S, and uh, they are uh, infinitesimally small, and the cascade is regarded as a discontinuous model in the actuator disk uh, theory. But uh, it's an, uh, uh, not correct for the uh, flatter program uh, because for uh, analyzing uh, the fruit falls like the flutter analysis, the original actual disk method was found to need an additional dimension of the length. It's um, found by Tanida, uh, the, uh, Professor Emeritus in uh, our university. So uh, he, Professor Tanida, proposed a new method. It's called semi-actuator disk method. So in this semi-actuator disk method, uh, the code length is a finite parameter, not infinitely small. So code length is retained, and pitch is infinitesimally small. That is an, a semi-actuator disk model. So by this uh, semi-actuator disk method, we can uh, calculate correctly the uh, braid force, unsteady uh, braid force. And the linear cascade uh, is uh, placed in a compressible flow. This time it's compressible flow, uh, so figure 2.1. Its code length is C and pitch is S. And this is in flow. The U, U is an, the uh, uniform uh, <clears throat> velocity in the x direction, it's an actual direction, and vu is the uh, component of uh, uh, steady <coughs> velocity in uh, y direction, it's a uh, cascade direction. This is, this is uh, a downstream uh, flow triangle. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, uh, the stagger angle of the flat plate is theta, and the pitch-wise coordinate is y, and the coordinate perpendicular y is x. It's an uh, actual uh, coordinate. And the code-wise coordinate is uh, defined as uh, xi. And the velocity component, steady velocity component is u and v, and the total velocity is w. The flow parameters in upstream and downstream field are denoted by suffixes uh, u and d. U is upstream, and D is downstream, okay? So uh, the flow is assumed to be irrotational in the far upstream field. And in this method, so flow comes from the upstream by this vector, and then inside the cascade, so flow is, uh, flows along the uh, chord. Okay, it's, uh, so this is two-dimensional, but inside uh, the cascade, the flow is one-dimensional. Okay. And uh, again, in the downstream field, it's two-dimensional. So the, uh, we use the uh, semi-actuator disk. So the flow into the cascade is deflected at the cascade leading edge and flows along the brake cord afterwards. So the steady components of the flow properties in the upstream and downstream fields are uh, correlated to each other by using the calculation <coughs> coefficients here. This is a little bit complicated, so two details, so I'll skip the details, but uh, we can uh, calculate the steady component, of course, but uh, we are uh, concentrated on the unsteady uh, part of this method. So uh, uh, the so we uh, introduce several parameters here, but uh, so it's uh, not, not so important in this uh, uh, context. So 2.1 uh, is uh, uh, the, uh, the basic um, equations for the uh, steady components. But, uh, and uh, uh, the linearized theory is applied on the assumption of the sinusoidal braid oscillation with small amplitude. And uh, so uh, the perturbation velocity by braid oscillation is denoted u and v, small u and small v, and the perturbation pressure p, and the density rho. So governing equations of the flow field are <coughs> same in both upstream and downstream fields, shown here, 2.2, the continuity equation and uh, equation of motion for x and y directions. That is a very general one. So, and uh, 
for isentropic case, we can use this relationship between rho and p, density and pressure, as you know. So uh, in here, <coughs> so uh, as the theoretical modeling, uh, we can uh, think that the flutter mode is uh, a sinusoidal traveling wave in the cascade direction. So the y direction is expressed, the uh, perturbation is ex expressed by this uh, function, exponential i omega minus a y uh, by vs. And vs is the phase velocity of the traveling wave in the cascade direction. So uh, there is an integrated phase angle and then, uh, so the flutter fluctuation is considered to be an, a traveling wave, like traveling wave, uh, to the cascade direction. Uh, here it's y direction. So uh, we can use this expression for y direction perturbation. So, uh, <coughs> so uh, the all the variables uh, is uh, represented with uh, so uh, capital phi, but uh, we can uh, think this uh, function into this uh, form. So a lambda is the wave number in the x direction, but to y direction, we can use this expression. And uh, time-wise, uh, we can use this expression for sinusoidal or a harmonic oscillation. So we can use all the variables to be in this form. The amplitude is here, this one, okay? So uh, we, uh, have u, v, uh, p, and rho, and all that uh, they are expressed in this uh, form. And then uh, we substitute these uh, values in, the, in this 2.2 governing equation. And then uh, we can uh, get this uh, wave number lambda for three types, <coughs> three forms. Okay. <clears throat> And this is a result of the wave number uh, consideration. <clears throat> so lambda 1 and lambda 2 and lambda 3 uh, is uh, corresponding to the, uh, each uh, different waves. And lambda 3, uh, for this perturbation, uh, it doesn't have the part, uh, perturbation pressure. And uh, it corresponds to a vortex wave, so-called vortex wave. It's only the fluctuation in velocity not pressure. But lambda 1 and lambda 2 are pressure fluctuation corresponding to the uh, direction of the uh, travel. Okay. Uh, and uh, lambda 1 is to the uh, down, no, no uh, upstream, corresponds to the pressure wave in the upstream field. Right, the wave of lambda 2 corresponds to the wave in the downstream field. So it um, comes from the non-diverging condition at the far upstream and the far downstream field. So uh, we can uh, uh, differentiate lambda 1 and lambda 2 based on the uh, non-diverging condition uh, to the uh, far downstream and far upstream infinity. Okay. And <clears throat> and. Uh, the perturbation parameters correspond to the three kinds of waves are denoted by the same suffixes as the corresponding wave numbers. And, uh, uh, and then, uh, so we can uh, express the old variables in the upper upstream field and downstream field in the following 2.6. Okay. And uh, we need some unknown uh, uh, parameters, unknown uh, a perturbation velocity uh, component. Uh, this, uh, in this uh, expression, we use V1 <coughs> is an unknown parameter, uh, unknown uh, coefficient. So VU, uh, upstream uh, fluctuating velocity in Y direction is expressed like this. And then <coughs> UU is here, but the unknown parameter is the same. We use V1. And PU and, uh, is also expressed like this. Okay. And uh, here also we use only V1. And in the upstream, uh, we don't have, uh, its upstream field is uh, irrotational. So we don't have an uh, vortex uh, wave here. And downstream field, uh, we have 
uh, the similar expression, but uh, we need v2 and v3. It's an, uh, corresponding to the lambda 3, it means a vortex wave. It's generated at the cascade. Okay? And uh, for UD, we also use V2 and V3. And PD, we use also V2 only. So, it's, uh, so vortex wave has no relationship with pressure. So it has only the uh, pressure wave. Okay? So uh, we use uh, three unknown parameters, V1, V2, and V3 in the expression of the perturbations in upstream and downstream flow field, okay? So these are the expressions in the upstream and downstream flow field. And then uh, we need to describe the uh, perturbations inside the uh, uh, cascade flow field. So It's a little bit complicated because uh, this is the control surface inside uh, the uh, flow field, uh, inside the cascade. But uh, the two adjacent braid and flow channel, it's, an, uh, uh, it's used as uh, uh, the control uh, surface also, but it's an only described the uh, flow channel. So uh, this uh, braid, uh, lower braid, is oscillating uh, with the oscillation velocity Q0 exponential i omega t. And this one, the adjacent braid, is also oscillating. But so Q0 is the same, but there is uh, some phase difference because interbraid phase angle. So uh, it's this, uh, the velocity, oscillating velocity of this braid is expressed as this one. So there is um, a, a time lag here. Okay. So uh, we need to consider the change in the control surface here by, uh, by this uh, S prime, okay? So S prime can be calculated by this equation, 2.7. So Q0 is the amplitude of the perturbation velocity of the braid oscillation, and S is the original pitch. But S prime is the new, so uh, variation of the pitch by the two braid oscillations, okay? So, in a cascade uh, flow field, the flow is one dimensional along the braid code. So the small change in the braid pitch S prime has to be considered. So the continuity equation is shown here like this. So this term is related to the S prime. Okay. And uh, uh, the, uh, the equation of motion is shown here. It's one direction. So only the C direction is described here. So this is the uh, basic equation, governing equation in the, on, uh, for the flow field inside the cascade. So the solution is as the same as in the upper and uh, downstream uh, field. So uh, we can uh, calculate WC, it's a uh, fluctuating velocity in the uh, cascade flow field. And we use W4 and W5. These are pressure wave pressure wave to the downstream and upstream field. And row C is expressed as this one. Okay. We use also W4 and W5. So uh, we use, uh, uh, <coughs> by this, uh, we could express the uh, all perturbations uh, in the, the upstream field and downstream field and inside cascade field. So we uh, used five unknown parameters. Uh, for upstream, uh, we used V1, and uh, downstream, we used V2 and V3. And for the inside cascade flow field, we uh, used W4 and W5. So we have five unknowns. These are unknowns of this program. Okay, so we need five boundary conditions to determine these parameters. Okay. Then uh, we use the boundary conditions or connecting conditions at the actuator disk. Okay. So uh, we need five uh, uh, equations boundary for as an uh, boundary conditions. Okay. <clears throat> so again, uh, figure 2.3, it's a control surface inside the cascade. So this is a leading edge frame, and this is down, uh, 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 
uh, trailing edge plane, and there is S prime, it's a change in the uh, pitch of the uh, two adjacent rays. <coughs> so, uh, the lower blade is oscillating as a velocity Q0 exponential I omega t, and the upper one is oscillating by this uh, velocity, respectively. And uh, so uh, we use, uh, the first one, uh, we use the conservation of mass through the control surface. So this is uh, number one. And uh, number two is, uh, it's the uh, uh, next page, conservation of energy. It's the second one. And the third one is flow outlet conditions. Uh, we can have four uh, conditions for flow outlet conditions. So they are enough for uh, calculating the unknown parameters. So first one is, go back to this page, the first one is conservation of mass. So the conservation of mass for the control surface is uh, in a general form uh, this equation. The first term is uh, the mass accumulates in, in the uh, control surface in the unit time. And, and the second term is the mass flows into and out of the surface. <clears throat> then we have to be careful. So there is here, uh, there is a change in the control surface. So in general, the uh, so control surface is fixed. But in this case, it's moon. So that is a uh, problem. So there is an uh, so outflow and uh, a slightly slight outflow and inflow uh, occurs here on this boundary, upper boundary. So we can consider the uh, outflow and incoming flow from this surface also. <coughs> It's not fixed, not fixed on the uh, blade surface. That is a um, uh, uh, very important uh, point. It's an unusual uh, consideration. So, okay, so the, f uh, the mass flow uh, into the uh, control surface from the upstream uh, boundary is shown here. And uh, the downstream, uh, the outflow from the downstream, uh, mass, uh, mass flow from downstream is shown here. And upper boundary <coughs> is shown here. And the mass accumulated in the control surface, it's on the first term, is uh, shown here. So we combine all four components into one. We can have the uh, mass flow conservation uh, equation 2.11. Uh, this is for the first boundary condition. <coughs> and the second one is conservation of energy. The concept is the same. The 2.12 is a general form of the uh, conservation of energy. <clears throat> the first term is, uh, represents the temporal increase in the internal energy and the kinetic energy of the fluid in the control surface. And the second term is energy transported into and out of the control surface by the flow. Uh, it's um, evaluated as the total enthalpy flow. This is an uh, so important part. So it's a um, total enthalpy flow in this uh, field. Okay. So the first one is total entropy flow at the upstream boundary inflow is here, and the downstream boundary outflow is here, and the upper boundary surface is here. So uh, and the temporal increase in the sum of internal energy and kinetic energy is here. So uh, we combine all these equations, uh, we can have get the uh, conservation of energy as two point thirteen. So uh, by this, uh, we can have two equations as the boundary conditions. And then for outlet conditions, so at the trailing edge surface of the cascade, <coughs> so we uh, can impose the smooth connection of the flow field, of course, both steady and unsteady flow properties. So uh, we can use uh, the outflow is directed to the blade core direction including unsteady velocity. It's an unsteady cut condition. And, uh, uh, and the conservation of mass flow at the outlet and the conservation of the total enthalpy flow and the outflow is directed to the blade core direction. So, uh, so uh, outlet flow 
uh, condition is uh, shown here. Uh, the uh, connection, the conservation of uh, density and uh, flow uh, direction or flow property, uh, flow components are smoothly connected uh, from inside the cascade to the downstream. Okay, so we have three uh, equations. So uh, we could get the boundary conditions equations 2.11, 2.13, 2.14, 15, and 16. So five equations. But these are sufficient conditions for the five unknowns, V1, V2, V3, and W4, and W5. So uh, from these conditions, <coughs> so we uh, can express the, all the, uh, these uh, unknown variables is a uh, function of the Q0. <coughs> Q0 is the airflow in, uh, oscillation velocity. It's an, uh, given as a boundary condition of a, a cascade vibration condition. So we can calculate all the variables by this. <coughs> And if we uh, obtain the perturbation parameters, uh, we can calculate the unsteady aerodynamic force acting on the airfoil. So uh, for this, uh, the conservation of momentum for the control surface is used. So conservation of momentum and evaluation of unsteady aerodynamic force is shown. The conservation of momentum is, uh, in the general form, we can write here. The first term is corresponding to uh, the force acting on the control surface. And the second term is the temporary increase in the momentum of the fluid in the control surface. And third term represents the transported momentum by the flow through the control surface. Okay, the concept is the same as above. And uh, it's a uh, very long equation, but momentum conservation in, in x direction is uh, finally expressed as uh, uh, this one. 2.18, and from, uh, so we used the, the um, only the momentum flows. So f uh, it's an uh, incoming uh, momentum from the up upstream uh, surface and out uh, flow uh, from the downstream surface and upper side here, okay. and. Uh, uh, the airline force acting on the control surface from the upstream field, it's a, from the downstream field and the force, it, uh, it, and the airflow steady starts on the control surface and the unsteady starts on the control surface are described. It's uh, four terms here. And here, FU and FL is used are used, and FU and FL are the unsteady aerodynamic forces acting on the upper surface of the lower airfoil and acting on the lower surface of the upper airfoil, respectively. Okay, so this is an X, uh, and uh, also the temporary increase in the fluid momentum in the control surface is shown here. Uh, so uh, we can uh, get the X direction momentum equation like this. So here we use FU and FL here, okay. And uh, in a similar manner, we can calculate the momentum conservation in Y direction. And the, the results is shown here by equation 2.19. It's on Y direction. So uh, we'd like to have the uh, force coefficient perpendicular to the braid cord. So from this uh, y direction and x direction, we can calculate uh, this one. So uh, the momentum equation in the direction perpendicular to the airfoil cord is obtained by this calculation. Okay. The result is shown here, 2.20. And uh, it's a suffix n. n is the, uh, denotes the aerodynamic force component in the direction perpendicular to the cord. So uh, the aerodynamic force on the airfoil is expressed by using the unsteady pressure on the upper surface, PCU, and that on the lower surface, PCL. So uh, we can uh, calculate it by this expression, 2.21. So this one, PCL minus PCU, this is the, what I, we want to calculate, okay. 
so or we can get uh, this one. Uh, this is uh, yes uh, expressed as F n. This force is F n. So we would like to get this value. So by this uh, explanation. So uh, we can calculate from 2.20. Uh, we can calculate this F n. Okay. So this is can be calculated by 2.20. Yes. So uh, finally, <coughs> if we get F n, F n is non-dimensionalized by uh, this 2.23. So it's an, uh, divided by rho, zero, d, a, d, and q, and s. q is an uh, braid uh, oscillation uh, velocity. Okay? And uh, uh, this is expressed as a real part, CFR, and imaginary part, CFI. So it's um, similar in the uh, theory of singularity. So yeah, the term CFR is the real part of the unsteady dynamic force coefficient. And CFI is the imaginary part. And the real part is the unsteady dynamic force component in, in phase with the airfoil oscillation velocity. So it corresponds to the exciting force. If FCR is positive, the oscillation uh, becomes unstable by excitation. Okay, so for flat analysis, <coughs> we can use F, uh, CFR. <coughs> So when CFR is positive, the aerodynamic damping is negative, and the unstable oscillation occurs. Okay. And <clears throat> so the real part of the unsteady aerodynamic force coefficient is a function of the stagger angle theta and a steady circulation of the airfoil and the Mach number, the reduced frequency, and eta interval phase angle uh, sigma. In, in this expression, we use sigma as an IBPA. <coughs> and uh, this is an um, image of the uh, results, final results. It's a graph of the exciting energy or exciting work against reduced frequency. It's concept conceptual illustration. So uh, from CFR, uh, we can calculate exciting energy or exciting work E. So by uh, the uh, exciting energy of is obtained through multiplying CFR by oscillation velocity and integrating the product on the airfoil surface. And, and uh, if E is positive, the flat occurs, okay, the uh, oscillation is unstable. So, uh, but uh, it depends on the IBPA, interbred phase angle. If we choose one IBPA here, sigma, we can draw this curve, one curve. And uh, uh, this part is uh, uh, the part with uh, positive E. So it's an uh, unstable region. But here, uh, the flutter is stable. It doesn't occur. Okay. So this uh, zero cross point is the critical point of the flutter onset. Okay. And so this is the critical uh, point of the flutter. It's K uh, critical. But uh, if we change IBPA, interval phase angle, this curve changes to the right and to the left. Okay. And uh, we calculate the excitation energy uh, for every IBPA. So, and uh, we can find the, the most uh, uh, critical or most uh, dangerous value here. Is the largest K critical. So the largest K critical is the K critical in this system, in the current uh, oscillation. Okay. So uh, we have to check all IBPAs for 360 degrees, and we can have this critical point. That is the uh, evaluation of the flutter boundary. Okay. This is a flutter analysis. Okay, uh, so by this, uh, I'll finish uh, the uh, explanation of the actuator disk method. So uh, we uh, discussed about the uh, two methods, two analytical methods. One is singularity, and the other is actuator disk. So both are very useful uh, and 
uh, methods. But of course, uh, they are depending on the uh, potential flow analysis. So uh, it's an uh, indicit anyway. So uh, we cannot uh, use this one to the store like flutter or something, so practical uh, one. But it's a reference of all uh, computational methods and it's the basis of an, our understanding. And uh, another uh, good point is that we can evaluate the uh, component of the instability by this consideration. So what is the critical uh, component of the unsteadiness or flutter? Well, that is uh, easily uh, captured by these methods. So it's very important for physical understanding of the phenomena. So by numerical simulation, we can get flutter boundary um, uh, uh, relatively easily because we can use the commercial code. But uh, we, uh, by this, we cannot understand what's happening reality in the physical uh, so world. So by these kind of considerations, this is very, very important for understanding the physics of the flow. So I'd like to uh, show you uh, this kind of uh, not popular uh, methods nowadays. Okay. So, okay. So I'd like to move on to the uh, next part. The uh, next part is the experimental uh, methods. <coughs> Please go back to the page uh, seventy-four. Okay, so I'll change the topic to the experimental side, okay? Okay, so the experiment of the uh, oscillating rate or cascade flutter, uh, we can use two kinds of methods, basically. The first one is the free vibration method, and the second one is the forced vibration method. So in a, a free vibration method is... Uh, was used in the initial stage of the flutter uh, experiment. So in this uh, method, the blades are elastically supported in the wind tunnel. And uh, with increasing the flow velocity, flutter onset point and limit cycle are detected. So flutter uh, occurs really in, inside the uh, wind tunnel. That is uh, very easy to understand. Uh, flutter onset point. We can get the flutter onset point. And then uh, this vibration uh, goes to the limit cycle oscillation. So we can uh, detect the limit cycle. Okay? So this is an initial uh, type of the uh, flutter experiment. So uh, in this kind of uh, method, the flutter limit velocity and the limit cycle can be definitely determined. So that is a good point. But the aerodynamic parameters is not flexible, of course. So we set <coughs> one setting of the mechanical uh, cascade, and we can detect only one limit cycle and one onset point. So if we can, uh, we like to change the uh, condition, so we uh, need to prepare another set of the cascade, another so, uh, configuration. So only one point of flutter is determined. So it's a not um, uh, flexible, so it's not usable or uh, practically uh, not um, uh, convenient for the widely ranged uh, experiment. So uh, nowadays, uh, we usually use forced vibration method. It's based on the energy consideration, and blades are forced to oscillate in wind tunnel. 
And as they are then, of course, and over surface pressure are measured on the blades. And from these data, the acid work input of the station is calculated for stability analysis. So you already know the unsteady work or en exciting energy. So we can get the, uh, such kind of energy co causes energy from the detected data. It's an flexible for aerodynamic parameters, <coughs> and uh, both unstalled and stalled flow conditions are available. And uh, uh, as I will uh, explain later, a uh, very uh, convenient method is uh, developed nowadays. It's method of single blade oscillation is applicable. It's <coughs> called inference coefficient method. So this kind of uh, method is nowadays uh, is, uh, usually used. <coughs> and it's the example of the experimental apparatus. It's a transient linear wind ton cascade tunnel in my laboratory. And it's, uh, this is a uh, flow field here, and test section is here. And uh, we have an air source outside. It's a uh, 30 cubic meters capacity, and the pressure is 8.5, 0.85 megapascal. It's, uh, uh, yes, and uh, we open valve, and we can introduce the flow from here. So it's a blow down type. So of course the continuous type is available, but and it's con more convenient. But continuous flow for continuous uh, type, uh, we need very powerful air source. So it's very expensive. So as many industries have that such kind of system, but <laughs> for university it's too expensive. So we need. Uh, we use uh, uh, this kind of uh, blowdown type. Okay. So uh, it's, we are now using uh, Mach 1.2, but uh, we have uh, the duration time of the flow about to one minute. But uh, nowadays, so, uh, uh, so measure, measurement system is very high, high, high response. So it's no problem to use only one minute. And uh, we can use every 15 minutes to fill the tank. So every 15 minutes, we can blow the flow. Yes, so it's uh, no problem to, uh, to do uh, this kind of uh, cascade uh, test. OK, <coughs> so uh, and, uh, uh, the settling chamber is uh, upstream. And then uh, uh, this is a contraction, flow contraction uh, nozzle. And this is a variable wall. It's a convergent divergent nozzle. It's, and we can adjust uh, this nozzle to set the markdown bar at here in the test section. So it's an, a little bit hard task for students to make this wall <laughs> shape. <laughs> it's an, uh, designed on the yeah, characteristic method. But in reality, it's very difficult because there is not uniform in the downstream. <laughs> so, uh, so, so sometimes the students are adjusting uh, for one month to set a stationary and good flow field here. But uh, if we have more money, we can use the uh, automatic uh, adjust system here. <laughs> okay. And then uh, this test section is shown here. We are using seven braids shown here. Uh, it's an uh, the suction surface is lower side, and the pressure surface is upper side. Okay, and uh, we have uh, seven braids and Mach number one point two. But so in this kind of cascade tunnel, uh, the very important point is uniformity of the flow in cascade direction. So every <coughs> braid has to uh, have the uh, same flow field from upstream. But it's impossible because there is a wall here and here, of course. So uh, uh, hopefully uh, we use more uh, braids and use the central part only. But in our case, it's a limitation of the size of the wind tunnel. We use five braids, but we use uh, three braids inside to uh, maintain the uniformity of the flow in this field. Okay. So we are checking this by uh, wall pressure measurement. 
and <coughs> and several uh, devices needed to uh, maintain the uniformity of the flow. For instance, there is a bypass flow here and here, and uh, we can adjust the uh, this this parts. So uh, angle of these parts or some mm, yes. The angle of these parts can be changed to maintain the uniform flow uniformity here. And uh, uh, also, uh, we uh, have a flap valve here downstream. So it, uh, it can change the uh, back pressure of the cascade. Okay. So this, uh, here the pressure is the same, but back pressure can be changed. So to change the flow field inside cascade. So for the uh, flexible condition. Okay. And uh, uh, this is a uh, shadow graph photo, the example. So braid number zero and braid minus one and braid plus one. And uh, these are braids. But uh, what's this? So this belt, black belt. So uh, uh, the <coughs> Braid must be supported by both uh, hub side and tip side. And, but uh, we'd like to look at the inside. So it's a shadow graph. So we put a glass wall one side. And the other side is a mirror, uh, yes, metal mirror. And uh, we uh, shoot the laser. And then it's a reflection. And we can take some photos, shadow graph or Shuriden photos like this. So uh, this side is glass. So glass cannot support the blade. <laughs> okay. So we put a uh, thin uh, metal plate here on the glass wall and make a hole and then uh, so uh, and uh, the blade is supported by pin into this hole. So this uh, support system is uh, here, it's a black belt. And also here, we cannot access optically because uh, this is an oscillating blade, but blade number zero, this is oscillation blade. Okay. It's a force to oscillate by, uh, from outside. So uh, there needs uh, some hole Around the uh, on the wall, around this uh, oscillating blade for vibration. But uh, to prevent the flow uh, through this hole, it's need we need some uh, device to prevent the uh, uh, so leakage. Okay, so it's an uh, so rubber or something. Okay, and then uh, we prevent the uh, the leakage flow from the uh, hall. So it's an uh, the prevent system of the, uh, for the uh, leakage flow. It's, so we cannot uh, look at the here. So it's not mirror, it means, OK? So uh, but uh, we can look at the flow field shock waves by uh, shadow graph or Schuriden photo. So there is an uh, leading edge shock here. Uh, so a person mystery. Uh, showed some example the day before yesterday. And there is a leading shock, and also there is an uh, yeah so normal shock here. It's on a chalk side in uh, uh, Professor <coughs> Mystery's explanation, but it's very usual uh, situation of this uh, uh, transonic cascade. Okay, <coughs> we are using the airfoil as an airfoil. We can uh, we use uh, a double circular arc. It's on a Transonic uh, airfoil, and <coughs> and the pitch is twenty seven millimeters, and solidity is one point six seven. The core, core length is about fifty uh, millimeters, and uh, also the uh, span is around fifty millimeters. So, uh, the aspect ratio is around one point zero. So it's an, uh, not enough. Uh, for two dimensionality, but uh, it's a uh, uh, limitation of the uh, whole wind tunnel uh, system facility. 
And this is a typical uh, cascade tunnel. <coughs> and uh, okay, so this is a Schwedian photograph, and uh, uh, we can change the pressure ratio by uh, this flap valve. And pressure ratio is 1.16. It's a uh, low one, uh, so choke side. <coughs> so there is an oblique shock here, leading edge oblique shock here, and passage shock here. We can see. So the flow is supersonic, and through the oblique shock, still supersonic. But uh, at the passage shock, it's a normal shock. So it's uh, decelerated to the subsonic outlet. And if we change uh, the uh, rise, uh, the increase the pressure ratio, the passage shock go upstream, pushed upstream, and then further high back pressure, uh, this passage shock uh, gradually merges with the oblique shock, and then no, oh, it's a uh, limitation. But if we change uh, further. If we uh, increase the back pressure further, there is only one shock here. It's a um, nearly detached shock, but one shock here. It's an, uh, the, an ideal uh, so configuration of the shock wave, but it's, it is usually unstable. So it's, uh, and if we uh, increase the back pressure further, so we have the detached shock here. It's uh, quite unstable. So at the touched but uh, leading edge uh, one shock, it uh, uh, easily moves to upstream and detached shock. So that is uh, quite unstable. So usually we use this situation with uh, leading edge oblique shock and passage shock. That is a very usual uh, cascade flow of the transonic uh, regime. And uh, <clears throat> we can uh, measure uh, the blade uh, surface pressure by pressure sensors. And this is um, our results. <coughs> and it's an example of the steady pressure distribution in this case. So it's a pressure surface, and this is a suction surface. <coughs> so as you so, <clears throat> but this is a, uh, here we have a passage shock, and this is a pressure surface. So there is a big pressure uh, change at the passage shock. And also there is an oblique shock, and it reflects at the, here, the adjacent blade. So there is a shock point here. So also we ha have uh, some... Uh, rapid uh, change in the pressure here. Okay. On the, uh, the pressure surface, we can see the shock here. It's um, the case with the uh, pressure ratio of 1.16. It's the lowest back pressure case. And we have <coughs> shock here. And then uh, if we increase uh, the pressure ratio, this uh, over, uh, no, uh, normal shock uh, it's moved to upstream like this here and here and here the finally 1.43 it's an, uh, not clear ambiguous it's a merged shock uh, pattern uh, this is a pressure surface uh, results and on suction surface we also have here the, this continuity of uh, the pressure uh, it's an oblique shock point but oblique shock doesn't change by pressure ratio. It's a subsonic, uh, no, sorry, uh, here. <coughs> so it's a reflection point. So but it doesn't change if this uh, uh, passage shock uh, changes its position. But uh, here, it's a supersonic region. So uh, this point doesn't change. And this oblique shock doesn't change. Okay, so <coughs> so uh, we have the discontinuity here, the same position for the various pressure ratio. But 1.43, it's uh, not the case. Okay, so it's already the, uh, uh, the uh, shock, uh, normal shock was uh, upward uh, near leading edge, and it's merged shock. So this this is uh, not the case. It's a very different uh, pressure uh, distribution. 
uh, compared with the others. <coughs> okay. This is a typical uh, pressure distribution on the blade, transit case. <coughs> and one important point is the uh, three-dimensionality of the flow inside the cascade tunnel. Okay. Uh, this is the oil flow image of the surface flow. <coughs> on the case of zero incidence and five degrees incidence. <coughs> okay. So uh, this is leading edge, and this is training edge, and this is a wall, and this is a mid cord, a uh, mid span, and also in sense five, uh, this is the uh, tip, and this is mid cord position. So we can see from leading edge to trailing edge, this is a uh, streamline on the surface. It's two dimensional. It's okay, but near the wall, uh, we can easily see. The boundary area, wall boundary area, is growing here. Okay, so it's not two-dimensional. So not, uh, it's not desirable. But if we increase the incidence to five degrees, the growth of the boundary area is severe, very severe. Okay, and there is uh, it's an, a separation. But so wall boundary area growth is a very big problem in this kind of cascade tunnel. So we need boundary layer suction uh, from the wall. Uh, we suck the flow uh, to the uh, uh, to the wall uh, to outside uh, uh, by the pumping system. Of course, we use uh, so in this case we don't use that, but we. Set uh, yes, as it's shown this uh, suction port is here, so we <coughs> suck the uh, wall boundary layers from four, four walls in the upstream position, but it's an essentially so at the cascade position. Anyway, so boundary layer, wall boundary layer grows gradually. So we cannot avoid that completely. But that's a pro one problem. We have to be careful. OK, so at this point, I'd like to have a break. Okay, so we'll continue the talk about uh, the uh, experimental method. So for flutter experiment, uh, we needed to oscillate the a blade uh, from outside. So uh, for the oscillation system, uh, we are using this type of the oscillator nowadays. So uh, this is a uh, wall of the uh, wind tunnel uh, shown here in the photograph. And uh, there is a support system with a central blade here. It's a holder. And it's connected to the os that linear oscillating system, like this. And this whole system is mounted on the oscillator, electric oscillator here. So nowadays, we can buy this kind of oscillator very easily. So that is an easy system. And uh, it can be oscillated in this direction. So it's a translational board. But it can be used also for torsional uh, uh, oscillation. Because uh, if we put the pushing point, it's an other, another place. Uh, it's a different place from that. Uh, uh, torsion axis, uh, we can oscillate uh, by hinging. It is 
this kind of uh, oscillation is uh, possible. So for both torsional and translational mode, we can use this kind of oscillation system. It's very easy. But in the former time, uh, we used uh, so several kinds of oscillation system. It's also uh, used uh, nowadays. So this is a uh, crank system for translational oscillation. And this is an, oh, it's an wind tunnel from downstream side. So this is an uh, oscillating blade, and the support is here. And uh, uh, there is a uh, crank system here, it's shown here. It's an uh, electric motor, and uh, there is a circular plate here. And it's an, uh, rotated like this, and there is <coughs> a, uh, it's a ball end, uh, ball bearing, uh, rod end. And this rod is, uh, in, is oscillated in this direction. And whole uh, uh, oscillation <coughs> system of the uh, airfoil is uh, oscillated in this direction. That is uh, one a possibility. And another possibility is electromagnetic system. It's um, for trans, uh, uh, torsional oscillation. So there is an uh, electric magnet here and here. Uh, this is a normal uh, magnet, and this is an uh, electro, uh, electric magnet. So uh, we can uh, realize the oscillation like this here. And so this is the mount of the uh, blade. And a uh, blade can be oscillated in a torsional motion by this method. So uh, also we can use uh, this kind of system by uh, uh, some uh, uh, gear system or something. So, uh, so there are uh, several possibilities. But these are uh, easy system. But nowadays, as I said, uh, this kind of oscillator is uh, very easy easy to get. So uh, we, uh, nowadays we use uh, this system. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, and uh, uh, the calculation of no, uh, oscillation uh, is uh, only on the uh, braid number zero. So, because we are using inference coefficient method. So uh, this uh, inference coefficient method is uh, based on a linearized consideration, uh, uh, such as uh, small amplitude and unsteady aerodynamic force. So cascade is linearly independent from oscillation amplitude of each braid. So uh, in the realistic or uh, ideal case, uh, we put the oscillation of every uh, braid. And then uh, with an arbitrary interbraid phase angle, and we uh, measure, for instance, the unsteady aerodynamic force by string edge. Then uh, we can detect the precise uh, uh, unsteady aerodynamic force in the flutter case. But uh, this kind of system is very, very complicated, and the cost is very high. So uh, this uh, inference coefficient method was invented by Professor Hanamura in our university, and it's uh, widely used nowadays in the, uh, all over the world. So uh, we need on to oscillate only one blade, and uh, we measure the anti-dynamic force or pressure on this blade and the nevas also. And then after that, we combine these data into this equation. And then we evaluate the uh, unsteady aerodynamic force on the each braid in the case of uh, arbitrary inter-braid uh, phase angle. That is very sophisticated uh, method. So the first vibration is put on a central braid only. And the unsteady aerodynamic forces are measured on the oscillating braid itself, as well as neighboring stationary blades. And the data are superposed linearly to obtain the unsteady aerodynamic force in the cases when all braids are oscillating with arbitrary interbraid phase angle. So C sub n, Cn is a non-dimensional <coughs> unsteady aerodynamic force induced on the braid number n due to the sinusoidal oscillation of the braid number zero. Well, this is the inference coefficient. And sigma is interbraid phase angle. 
and the non-dimensional aerodynamic force in all braids association with the uh, arbitrary interbraid phase angle, the C sigma, is calculated by this equation. <coughs> the C0 is the, uh, uh, the answer aerodynamic force on the braid number 0 itself, the, the oscillation braid itself. And then the others are here. And, uh, and in the ideal uh, situation, the number of braids is infinitely uh, uh, so many, uh, infinite number. Uh, but uh, if we use plus minus two braids, so this provides sufficient accurate results. It's an um, empirical uh, knowledge by the experiment by Professor Hanamura. And uh, we, if we use uh, five braids, so we can estimate uh, the uh, unsteady aerodynamic, fo aerodynamic force in uh, plus or minus uh, two percent or some 2.5 percent accuracy. But uh, only three braids, uh, we can estimate the unsteady aerodynamic force by plus minus 5 percent accuracy. So uh, we usually use only three free braids. So as, as I told, it's very difficult to have a uh, uniformity of the flow field and whole braids. So we are focusing on the three braids, central three braids, and we use plus minus and up to plus minus one. That is our uh, experimental method nowadays. Okay. <clears throat> and the measurement of the unsteady pressure and the aerodynamic force on blades. So in the experiment on the oscillating cascade, so we measure the surface pressure on the oscillating blade with the pressure transducer, or we measure the aerodynamic force on the blades with the string gauge. Uh, this is, these are the very conventional usual uh, methods. So uh, this, uh, these are the example. Uh, this is a uh, KTH uh, Royal uh, Institute of Technology in Sweden, uh, Damien Vogt and Torsten Fransson. And this is Jan and Lihe in, uh, in Oxford. And we also have the same kind of system. And uh, these data are, uh, pro can provide useful data for CFD validation. A useful or CFD uh, is uh, essentially need the validation uh, against the uh, experimental data. So, uh, um, but there are some problems are the pressure transducers provide only pointwise and discrete pressure data, not the continuous. And the string gauge measures the total aerodynamic force on the braid but no uh, knowledge on the surface pressure or no detailed uh, uh, knowledge can be obtained by string gauges. And uh, so these are difficult to observe the acid behavior of shock waves uh, separated flow due to low spatial resolution. So in the former time, this is enough. Uh, but uh, of course, the researchers uh, realized the limitation but nowadays uh, we need more uh, detailed uh, knowledge, information on the surface pressure or surface force distribution. So we need uh, other uh, methods. It's a uh, situation. Okay, so the first example is the strong gauge measurement of the unsteady aerodynamic force. This is our system. <coughs> there is a braid in support here. Uh, oh, this is a, a plate for prevention of the leakage flow, uh, uh, so due to the oscillation system. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, at the support, we put string gauge here, so we can detect the aerodynamic force by this string gauge. But string gauge detect also the inertial force, of course. So uh, we need to so correct that. So we compare the results of the strain gauge, uh, data of strain gauge, uh, get the strain gauge in the uh, wind tunnel with uh, airflow case and without airflow case. So 
uh, okay, so and uh, uh, we put off the uh, without flow case this data, and we can get the aerodynamic force purely uh, aerodynamic force. That is our strategy. It's a, uh, not our <laughs> strategy, but it's an usual strategy. Okay, and uh, the unsteady aerodynamic work can be detected by this system. Well, it's a result. Uh, so example, but. Uh, this is an, uh, a direct uh, result of the measurement. This is an uh, amplitude of the force coefficient <coughs> against the pressure ratio, it's as, as, as I showed uh, previously. Uh, but, and the uh, red uh, line, red uh, uh, symbols are grade number zero data. And the blue is minus one, then green is plus one. And this is an amplitude, and this is a phase shift. So uh, we can detect this kind of data, and we can uh, combine these three uh, raised data by inference coefficient method. And finally, we can calculate this unsteady aerodynamic work coefficient here. And if this value is positive, and the flutter is unstable, flutter occurs, the oscillation is unstable. This is a so-called S-curve here. And And uh, oh, yes, uh, we we can look at the uh, data on each braid. This is braid number zero. So braid number zero is an uh, uh, independent of the uh, interbraid phase angle. Okay. <coughs> and braid plus one data is here. It's um, almost zero. Why? Because braid number Sorry, minus one, minus one plus. Oh, it's an uh, incorrect. Uh, this is minus one, and uh, the triangle is plus one. Sorry. So because uh, minus one is uh, located upstream of the oscillating braid, so the influence of the oscillation of braid there uh, doesn't affect this braid so much. And uh, so to the plus one braid, the braid oscillation is very effective. Okay. So that is the reason why we have a very big uh, work coefficient on the braid plus one, but not visible the effect on the braid minus one. Okay. And in total, uh, we combine these three data in um, into one uh, data final uh, final data uh, by uh, inference coefficient method, we can calculate estimate the uh, whole cascade system's instability like this, a solid line. So uh, these parts are unstable. The flat occurs in these uh, interbraid phase angle. That is the typical uh, results. Uh, using a string gauge. So there is no data on the braid surface, but whole uh, unsteady aerodynamic force on the braid can be measured by this method. And pressure sensor measurement is an example. So uh, we can put the pressure sensor is these points on the suction surface and the pressure surface. But, uh, and the pressure transducer as pressure transducer, the Q-light sensors are very famous and typical. The problem is it's uh, very expensive from the academic point of view. So uh, we cannot put many sensors on the ray. That is a problem. And, but nowadays, uh, there are several choices of the pressure transducer. It's a very cheap one. So uh, we can uh, look at these uh, lines So using the uh, inexpensive pressure transducer. That is uh, one uh, future strategy for us. Uh, but the problem is, uh, so we can clearly see that <clears throat> uh, we can only, we can measure only the discrete pointwise <coughs> measurement of the pressure by tra pressure transducer. 
And the important point is we cannot put the pressure transducers on leading edge side and trailing edge side, especially leading edge side. So this is a very important part, but we cannot have any information in the thin uh, portion of the blade. That is a very big problem of the pressure transducer. Okay. And by these uh, transducers, we can get this kind of uh, pressure uh, distribution. It's a suction side CP against cold wise position and pressure side CP against cold wise position. As I showed uh, earlier, <coughs> uh, we can detect the shock, uh, the shock position like this here. It's a normal shock position, uh, shock, and this is an uh, oblique shock uh, effect. <coughs> okay. So this is a typical, and uh, if, if we integrate this data on the whole blade, we can get air, unsteady aerodynamic force. Okay. But the problem is, uh, of course, uh, there is no data on this kind of uh, near leading edge part. So, so this part has a very big contribution to the unsteady aerodynamic uh, force. But uh, we have to neglect this part by this method. That is a very big problem in this um, method. Okay. Ah, and this is a two-dimensional image, but uh, we need a three-dimensional image. So uh, hopefully we would like to put the pressure sensors on whole ray, many blades. That is desirable, but it's very, very expensive, one side. And another point is we have to connect the cables. Yeah. So cable is very, uh, so volume is very big. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have um, space to, uh, to uh, go th uh, put through the, uh, this uh, uh, thin braid, these cables. That is an, another problem. Uh, but nowadays we can use uh, tele uh, transformation of the uh, data. That is an impossible way. But of course it's very, very expensive. <laughs> that is an, another problem. Okay. But uh, we can have uh, uh, the new technique into this kind of measurement. So it's um, uh, day by day it can be <coughs> progressed. Okay. And uh, uh, another uh, possibility is to use uh, pressure-sensitive paint. You know, this is our current concern, and uh, I like this technique very much. So I'd like to show you uh, how uh, we use the pressure-sensitive paint to measure the unsteady aerodynamic force on the oscillating blade. <coughs> so pressure-sensitive paint a blade is shown here. Uh, it's an example. It's an, uh, the luminescence intensity changes according to the ambient pressure, so it's an expected to be applied as a pressure sensor. In the conventional method, uh, there is high measurement accuracy is uh, obtained, but the number of measurement points is limited. So pressure sensitive paint is a measurement, uh, it's a high spatial resolution. That is a very good point. But accuracy is, compared with the conventional method, it's now, uh, up to now, it's uh, less accurate. Um, uh, yes. But uh, we can uh, improve the method for future uh, technique. And the research objective is um, the applying PSP to steady and unsteady pressure measurement in cascade internal experiment and investing in the reliability of PSP measurement. And the method is cascade tunnel experiment with the oscillating uh, blade. And transonic flow field is shock wave. So uh, we uh, use PSP measurement. The pressure distribution on the blade surface is, the, uh, is uh, measured. And we integrate it, we can uh, obtain the aerodynamic force and moment. And uh, uh, also we perform the conventional uh, measurement with the pressure transducer or string gauge. And we compare these uh, results and check the PSP measurement accuracy or applicability. And again, uh, we are using uh, this linear cascade tunnel. 
And again, uh, this is a variable nozzle and cascade here, and some uh, devices to uh, get the uniformity of the flow field here. And tailboard is also used. And a uh, throttle valve is here to change control the back pressure of the cascade. And boundary air breathing system is equipped. And also there is a pressure tap on the walls, and we measure all the uh, situations of the flow field. Yes, as much as possible. Oh yes, the, the high pressure tank is 0.83 megapascal, and the Reynolds number is 10 to 6, and the Mac number is 1.2, and incidence zero degree. Okay, and oscillation amplitude peak to peak is a very small oscillation. It's an, uh, enough for measurement. And otherwise, uh, if we put uh, as a bigger oscillation number, it's uh, dangerous. <laughs> it's uh, broken. Okay, and the test cascade and airflow is double circular, <coughs> and uh, and there is a tip class and oscillating blade, and core length and span length and pitch length is shown here, and blade number zero only oscillated, and the measurement on zero and plus minus one blades, and we compare the data with the string gauge results. And test condition is shown here. Oscillation mode is bending mode, and frequency is 20 to 100 hertz. It's a limitation, a mechanical limitation. But uh, we, now uh, we are using up to 200 hertz. But reduced frequency is uh, uh, relatively low, so we'd like to increase the reduced frequency to 0.1 or 0.2. Uh, but it's very difficult for mechanical limitation. And amplitude is here, and the Reynolds number is 10 to the sixth order. And the uh, measurement method is uh, we use uh, so called anodized aluminum pressure sensitive paint, AAPSP. It's an, uh, the emitting dye is uh, so called basophen ruthenium, shown here. Um, and uh, we use it because this uh, PSP has the fastest response time. So um, now, uh, so in the literature, it's written that the ten, up to 10 kilohertz uh, response is available by this PSP. So uh, now our uh, measurement is up to the order of 100 uh, hertz. So it's um, if, uh, sufficient for flutter test. And the porous aluminum layer is used for the binding of the uh, PSP, uh, this uh, dye. So that is a know-how uh, issue. And it's an, uh, one uh, current problem of this method. So it uh, needs high skill. So only a few people can do that, <laughs> make that. So it must be generalized for general use. But uh, now, so yeah, uh, the several students in my laboratory can do that, <laughs> but I myself cannot make it, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, uh, for the measurement, uh, we use a metal halide light, it's light source. And uh, the reflected uh, light is captured by high-speed camera. So uh, the uh, pressure signal is detected by the uh, luminescence of that uh, reflected light. Okay. So uh, that is a technique. And uh, high-speed camera was used for capturing PSP image, and optical filter was set in front of, of both light source and high-speed camera. And uh, this is a uh, photo of the PSP blade illuminated by the metal halide light. And uh, pressure sensitive paint is mechanism of action is shown here. It's consists of uh, uh, 
luminophore molecular pressure problem, MINDA. The luminophore is excited by an illumination source and gives off luminescence and nano-open structure and high mass diffusion. So there is a luminar model with a porous surface. And then uh, mm. the light comes here and the oxygen quenching occurs and then reflected light, luminescence light, is captured as a signal. And the luminous intensity changes according to the ambient pressure due to the photophysical process of the oxygen quenching. So at the first time, uh, the PSP was used for the oxygen sensor. But uh, some uh, guys uh, yeah, realized that it can be used for pressure sensor. So it's an, uh, the origin of the PSP. So performance of a PSP, several uh, PSPs here, shown here, but AAPSP has a very fast, fastest response time. And the application of the uh, oscillating wing was already done by uh, Okabe, et al. it's in AIWA paper, uh, but, and, and they detected uh, satisfactory results with the Q-light sensor, the comparison with Q-light sensors. Uh, but uh, the use for oscillating cascade is uh, the first well, uh, uh, the first one by our uh, laboratory. And uh, the turbocharger, it's a uh, uh, turbo expo uh, paper uh, last year. It's my colleague, in, uh, Professor Kameda, in the uh, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, uh, proposed this uh, results on the. And that the turbocharger surface uh, can be uh, measured by PSP. Okay, so the merits of the PSP is non-contact and the quantitative high spatial resolution, complex aerodynamics flows, and fast time response. The merits is temperature dependency. Yes, this is a very big problem. So uh, this PSP has an. Uh, dependency on uh, pressure and also temperature. So the influence of temperature is uh, uh, very high. So uh, we can uh, correlate the temperature signal on the PSP signal. So that is, uh, uh, so we need some uh, special treatment of the temperature dependency to get the accurate pressure data from PSP signal. Okay, so this is the preparation, uh, preparation process of a PSP braid. So this is a um, braid, aluminum braid, and wiping in it uh, with ethanol, the step one. And the step two, rinse in NaOH. And then step three, anodization. So we use, we need to make this kind of porous structure on the surface. So we use <coughs> anodization by sul uh, sulfuric acid and by uh, the electron uh, system. And then uh, it's uh, rinsed in the, this uh, yeah, uh, liquid. And then after that, it's a dye absorption. Uh, this is a luminescence to, uh, dye. And then uh, the hydrophobization here, and then drying process. After the drying process, we can get this one. And it takes, whole this process takes about one week. So that is very troublesome, yeah, work. Uh, and uh, yes, need a very high skill to get a uh, uniform uh, dying on this uh, blade, whole blade. Okay, <clears throat> so this is an image processing procedure. <clears throat> so PSP image processing procedure, first one is capture PSP images, um, wind on image and wind off image. Then we compare these two signals, okay? And uh, the first three, uh, we look at the blade from not a straight side, but it's an inclined. So, okay. So, 
the first image is like this. Okay. <coughs> then we use affine transformation to make a rectangular view of the wind on image and wind off image. And uh, we use a cell averaging filter on both images and calculate the intensity ratio of the wind on and wind off uh, images. So wind off image is a reference image, IBF. Okay. And then we need calibration. So for calibration, there are several methods, but we use in situ method. So pressure data, pressure tap data was used to determine the calibration coefficient. And finally, uh, we use this, uh, we can uh, use this stand forma uh, equation. So this is intensity ratio and this is pressure ratio. So it's, these are uh, directly connected by this equation. But C0 and C1 is a calibration uh, coefficient. So we need to get this value by calibration. And uh, uh, we uh, use, as a reference, we use pressure tap data here and compare the PSP results and detect C0 and C1 and use these values for other points. Okay. So it's um, uh, the image of the calibration curve. It's the, the point is the pressure tap data and this red line is the uh, PSP data. Okay. And then we can calculate the pressure distribution it's the hub tip and leading edge and trailing edge. So this is um, the data on pressure data on the whole blades, continuous data. Now that is a very important uh, point of PSP usage. Okay. <clears throat> so it's a steady pressure measurement, in situ calibration. So uh, double circular blade with pressure taps on the suction surface and pressure surface. So in the previous uh, uh, figure, I draw the all points in one blade. But in reality, uh, we cannot do that because of the uh, limitation of the space. So we use two blades for uh, pressure surface measurements and for suction surface measurement. Two braids are necessary. And these are the uh, <coughs> results. Braid number zero, braid no minus number one, plus one. Uh, the pressure coefficient against uh, code-wise <coughs> uh, positions. And as you know, there is an, uh, it's a shadow graph image, and there is a uh, shock, normal shock, and uh, uh, leading edge oblique shock here. So we can uh, have the data on the uh, pressure surface, this is an uh, normal shock. Normal shock position is here. So, and uh, uh, symbols are pressure sensor data, and lines are PSP data. So we can get a sufficient uh, accordance uh, between the PSP data and pressure sensor data. But this is a uh, result of the calibration. So calibration is uh, going well by this uh, 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 this uh, results. <coughs> and then, <coughs> this is a steady uh, CP distribution on the bread surface. So, we can easily uh, see the shock wave here and also here. Here is, a, this is a suction surface. <coughs> so, this is the point of the uh, oblique shock, oblique shock uh, hit at, the, at this position. And this is a normal shock position here. So if effective shock wave is clearly captured by PSP. And uh, this is a comparison of the steady aerodynamic force between the PSP data and the string gauge data. Braid minus one, braid zero, and braid plus one. So uh, this uh, white uh, bar is the PSP data, and the colored bar is the string gauge data. So these, uh, yes a good agreement between two methods. But another point is uh, it's a 
difference between the blade zero and minus one plus one. So it's because this blade zero is um, cantilevered, and there is a tip clearance flow. But blade minus one, blade plus one is uh, not cantilevered, but uh, both size is uh, fixed. So it's an uh, the, uh, error or difference of the blade force. Okay. And this is an unsteady pressure measurement. <coughs> it's an, uh, the oscillation uh, frequency is 20 hertz. <coughs> and uh, these are uh, the data shown on this uh, blade, uh, the suction surface of the blade number zero is here. And the pressure surface of the blade plus one is shown here in the right hand side. Okay. And um, this is an unsteady CP distribution. So there is a real part of CP, an imaginary part of CP. Okay. So uh, these uh, both uh, these two surfaces are facing in one uh, channel, the common channel. Okay. So uh, we can see the pr pressure fluctuation and the shock wave. On the blade plus one pressure surface, that the shock hit on here, and we can clearly uh, see the effect of the shock wave here to the unsteady aerodynamic pressure. Okay, and also there is here there is an effect influence of the shock. This is a counterpart or the oblique shock. It's detected here. So large amplitude around shock wave can be detected. And uh, there, these are consistent results are obtained between the two blade surfaces across a ray to rate flow channel. So that is uh, what we wanted to see. And also, <coughs> we can see the very big unsteady CP here at the hub corner. So this large pressure fluctuation is uh, observed around corner separation region. So that is, uh, comes uh, from uh, the corner separation, probably. And the fluctuation has a phase difference with that of around shock. So around shock, it's a, this is blue color and red color. It means the phase is different from this one. And in the steady case also, we had this kind of fluctuation of the CP distribution already. And this is an oil flow image on the blade surface. So we can clearly detect the corner separation region here. But we don't have corner separation on the tip side because this is a blade number zero. So uh, there is a, a tip leakage flow here. So we don't have a big uh, separated region at the corner in the tip side. Okay. <coughs> and uh, this one is shock wave movement. So uh, from this result, uh, we can draw the shock position. Uh, so I don't know if it's the correct one or not, but it's a point of uh, the CP of uh, zero line is shown here. So uh, it's an, I think it's, what? Cancel. Yeah, okay. So what, say, pen? Cancel. Correct. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no. It is? It is all link. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so we can see the, the movement of the, the movement of the shock wave like this. It's, it can be mm, visualized based on this pressure 
uh, sensitive paint data. So that is uh, uh, probably the first case for you to see the movement of the shock wave <laughs> on the blade surface. Okay. So good. And finally, uh, we compared uh, the unsteady aerodynamic force coefficient on the blade between the pressure-sensitive paint and uh, pressure-sensitive paint and uh, string gauge. So uh, this, uh, these uh, figures show the amplitude of the unsteady aerodynamic force coefficient, and is a phase shift on the braid number zero and minus one and plus one. Okay, and uh, also the phase shift braid minus one, braid zero and braid plus one. <coughs> and and the uh, so abscissa is uh, reduced to frequency k. And the open symbols show the uh, PSP results, and the solid symbols show the string gauge results. So as you can see uh, there is a very good uh, agreement between the results of two methods. So it's unsatisfactory, I think. Okay. So uh, we can see the brain minus one has a very small amplitude, as we saw previously. And a big uh, amplitude can be detected on the braid number zero, uh, oscillating braid itself, and also braid plus one. So these two braids are governing this the whole uh, unsteady aerodynamic force on the blades. Okay. And the consideration on measurement accuracy. <coughs> so. Uh, there is a temperature dependency, as I told you. So PSP is not only sensitive to pressure, but to temperature as well. The temperature distribution of the blade in the wind tunnel was measured using some couples uh, in this our case. And the uniformity of the blade temperature was considered to be sufficient. And the surface temperature from the mid-span to the tip were almost identical. And the temperature at the hub had a discrepancy within two degrees C. So this is a uh, transonic wind tunnel. So it's an, uh, the uh, temperature is very low. And then, uh, so it's the temperature distribution is uh, almost uniform inside the wind tunnel. That is a good point. And uh, uh, two degrees C uh, discrepancy is uh, maximum, at the maximum a CP uh, discrepancy maybe 0.1. So it's an, uh, still a problem, but uh, we can uh, use this uh, point, uh, this method as the in inside, uh, within this uh, accuracy, okay? And uh, uh, nowadays, uh, some people are using a temperature sensor uh, uh, paint. Uh, temperature sensitive paint is also used can be used. So uh, some people use uh, pressure sensitive paint, uh, uh, paint also and also uh, temperature sensitive uh, paint. And then they compare uh, the both results and uh, uh, they correct the pressure data uh, you, by, based on the temperature uh, data uh, so with <coughs> calibration. That is a very accurate. Uh, yeah. And also uh, there is a um, uh, paint. It's um, uh, pressure-sensitive paint and uh, temperature-sensitive paint are mixed together in one paint. So some uh, people sell it, but uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the sensitivity is not so high. So that is uh, not usable uh, up to now. But in the future, yes, I. I, I think it can be a progress to be usable for this kind of measurement. And, and the pressure resolution, uh, it's an, a little bit old, but the, uh, the order of uh, accuracy uh, resolution is uh, uh, several hundred Pascal. So it's an, uh, enough for this kind of uh, 
measurement for flutter uh, experiment. But it's um, not enough for the general use for turbulent flow. So uh, it's, uh, the progress is necessary uh, in the uh, paint side. It's a uh, basic technique of the paint itself. Okay, and further improvement is sensitivity to temperature. <coughs> it um, must be considered. And the resolution improvement. And the paint thickness or light source luminescence. Uh, uh, light source luminescence is um, uh, uh, one issue. But uh, we can use a uh, more bright one uh, for uh, the near future. So it can uh, resolve this uh, sensitivity or resolution uh, problem. And of course, higher frequency. <laughs> it's not a uh, paint problem. <laughs> it's an, a mechanical problem. And a uh, generalization of measurement method uh, is for general use. Yeah. Okay, so almost the time. So I like to close this uh, morning session. Elisa. Thank you very much.